people power. Our power. Our power. Northern Uganda people power. Our power. Western Uganda people power. Our power. Eastern Uganda people power. Our power. Uganda region people power. Our power. Foot soldiers people power. Our power. Our power. Thank you. Thank you very much, comrades. Uh, before I say anything, I want to salute one of our comrades, one of the foot soldiers, a young man who belongs to the lowest of society and yet represents society most, our brother Onjima Godfrey Tower. Tower, thank you very much for representing the common people. Today, without plan, without preparation, you proved to us and to the world that you are not a hooligan, we are not hooligans. Thank you. Banange, mwenaba adeba uliza tawa, mkakasa, ntifabari wano, naba batulaba, ebali yo. Okogira kwa tawa, kwa badete tekekede, kutulaze, Ntimwe abantu wa wansi, abantu wa budijo, temuli bachirelezi. Mwizo kuwa temufu na mukisa, wababu dala, ngabu no, kuwa kwa chemogera. Era abantu banji, baba laba, mutambula na fe, ne baba itabachirelezi, awa gobelezi bacha akulanyi, awa yae bacha akulanyi. Weba rinyota wa, okakasa, tijia stemuli ba yae bacha akulanyi. Atemi nobe muko la sibi acha akulanyi, biyamwe. Thank you very much. Just like you saw Tawa, every other Ugandan here and those surrounding think they work, they are moral citizens, but they have been reduced to that. But they refuse to be slaves. So thank you very much, Tawa. I recognize that we are from different tribes. Yes, we are now standing in Uganda region. And it's easy for anybody to understand Uganda. But this is a national group. And therefore, allow me to communicate to everybody in the country and beyond. And then, Jakumarambize, Uganda. So today, I want to address only three issues. First, I want to welcome and commission our Kunga mobilization teams from the whole country. I want to appreciate you, Comrade Nyanzi, and your team, your mobilization team, for a job well done. We recognize you're doing, you've done this job and you continue to do it under challenging circumstances. But thank you for making it possible. Now, Kunga is a word that means mobilizing or calling upon because we have an urgent duty to free ourselves, to free our country. And the only way we can do that is by mobilizing and calling upon Ugandans to take charge, to do it themselves. And you, comrades, the mobilizers, you are very, very, very important in that. I must, however, warn you that now the dictator is watching you and is going to do everything to compromise you. So please, we call upon you to stick by the cause of the people of Uganda. Be true to this cause. And of course, while you're doing your work, we want to remind you that you're going to interface with elected leaders, members of parliament, mayors, councillors, etc. Please cooperate and coordinate with them. I've noticed some clashes. I've noticed clashes between mobilizers and elected leaders. And this has continued to project us in bad faith, in, in bad light. Friends, we must not be seen as people that are in a fight for positions of leadership. We must not clash. Otherwise, I want to take it. 
we must be seen to fight for a bigger cause. A cause of freedom for everybody, even those that are not standing for elective positions. And this brings me to my second point. That is the state engineered propaganda and the infighting. I'm very glad that even before me or my fellow leaders saying a word, we've been able to demonstrate to the entire nation that we are not a party in crisis like they love to project us. We are not a party in crisis, ladies and gentlemen. We are the national unity platform, and unity is our middle name. The dictator, of course, uses divide and rule as his policy. It's just unfortunate that we continue to fall in that trap, the trap of being divided against each other. You will see many regime apologists jumping onto the propaganda that sadly sometimes comes from within and many times comes from without. I will remind you, comrades, that boats don't sink because of the water around them. Boats sink because of the water that gets inside them. Museveni is not a danger to us. We are a danger to Museveni. Yes. Museveni is not a threat to us. We are a threat to Museveni. But guess what? We are a danger and a threat to each other. If we don't do what we must do. So ladies and gentlemen, while I speak to you today, I want you to know that it is the weak links that we give that help regime propagandists to sustain the regime. And like I repeatedly said, the dictator survives when we are busy attacking each other instead of attacking him. If you spend more time attacking your fellow comrades instead of exposing the criminal regime, then you must pause and ask yourself, who am I working for? I'll remind you, you can work for the dictator even without your knowledge. Yes, you can. But when you pause and see that what you're doing is helping the dictator instead of breaking him, then you will realize that you're working for the dictator. So ask yourself, is what I'm, I've been doing for the last two weeks, the last one week, the last 24 hours, what I'm doing now or what I'll be doing tomorrow and the day after, is that helping our struggle? Is that breaking dictator Museven or is it helping him? And then there will, you will be with the answer. So let us be careful. I must also emphasize, friends, that I am not trying to silence you or stop you from speaking out, especially against those that are among us but could be working for the dictator, that could be sellouts. I've always said that if you have any evidence that one of our leaders or comrades is working for the enemy. Please bring it to us, the leaders. I'll tell you that in the course of this struggle, many people have been att attacked, some rightly and some wrongly. Bobby Young, for example, who is in prison today, he was one time accused for being a state operative until he was arrested together with the Edi Mutoes and Nubians and spent over seven months in Chitalia. You remember Nobat? Where is Nobat? Nobat Ariho was accused of throwing a grenade at me at the campaign trail. And it was until a video was brought and analyzed that we were convinced that Nobat is not a regime, a, a, a regime operative. So it's important, ladies and gentlemen, to look deeply, analyze, before we put it out there, because it's going to scatter us. Those stories mostly begin from the enemy side, and they plant them in us. And before we know, we're helping the enemy to divide our own team. We must not allow the enemy to set the narrative. We must not allow the enemy to think for us. Now, my third point, ladies and gentlemen, is even important, as in more important. Many people have been asking about our stand on the issues of Honorable Muhammad Sejirinya and Honorable Alan Sewanyana. 
I already spoke out about this. I issued a statement, but once again, I would emphasize it. First, I want to welcome back our comrades from that long illegal detention. Welcome back, comrades. It has been painful, it has been tough, but you are back. Strong, brothers. Strong. I want to thank all the lawyers and the teams that have been working with them for working tirelessly to ensure that our brothers get their freedom. But most importantly, I want to thank the people here in Uganda and all over the world for exerting pressure on this regime. I am convinced that more than anything, it was that pressure that forced the regime to free our people, at least tentatively. So I want to request you to continue demanding for other political prisoners. There are very, very, very many. In hundreds. Don't give up demanding for them. Continue to demand for them because all of them must be free. You have all seen and heard the renewed abductions of our people. The latest victims have been Kali Disebi, Kabogo Alex, who were picked from Nakaseke, the constituents of Comrade Alan Mayanja, and we don't know where they are. Also, our brother Mobiru Saddam Sadat was picked up from Salama Road and taken away. There are many others that we don't know where they are. Our brother Tawa just came back yesterday and you've heard his story. I cannot repeat his words. We don't know what they've injected him with. We just hope that he will be healthy and full again. I've also heard and read in the media that the, there were negotiations with dictator Museveni so that our comrades, Sejirinya and Sewanyana, can have their freedom back. And this I will say. While we have always been open to constructive dialogue with anybody, our question has always been, what kind of dialogue? And with who? And about what? We have made it clear that we are open to transparent and genuine dialogue which has a clear agenda. And that agenda, ladies and gentlemen, has to include a transition from a military dictatorship to democracy. The first thing on the agenda of that dialogue, if it's to be there, is when is Museveni leaving? And the answer must be immediately out to Tandiko Kogira. If any dialogue does not include stopping dictatorship and freeing our country, then the twin numbers in number seven. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for all these years, Museveni has demonstrated that he does not in any way believe in dialogue, but co-optation. Museveni's kind of dialogue has always been, how much money do you want? What position do I give you? And we are not about to deal with that kind of dialogue. Okay? We shall not be part of any kind of dialogue with Museveni because what Museveni wants is to use us as wheelbarrows. And we are not wheelbarrows. So, we are not having no dialogue with Museveni. We have not, and we shall not take part in any dialogue because we don't discuss our fundamental human rights. Those are enshrined in the Constitution. We cannot start discussing with Museveni whether he will allow us to be human beings or not. And like we said before, Museveni believes that he must squeeze you on the ground, put his boot on your neck, and then say, let us talk. That is not the kind of dialogue that we hope to take part in, ladies and gentlemen. Our two MPs and hundreds of other political prisoners are innocent. They were illegally detained. So if anyone took part, and please quote me, if anyone took part in any talks with Museveni, that was not with our knowledge or endorsement. And if any promises were made, those were fake promises. <laughs> to you, Mr. Museveni, if any, anybody spoke to you claiming to represent NUP, <laughs> you were conned. What was the
thought it's important to make that clear. I have spoken to the leader of opposition being the head of our front in parliament about the allegations and he has trashed them just like he has trashed them publicly. And like he has said, until concrete evidence to the same is provided, we shall still consider that as regime propaganda. We must be careful, ladies and gentlemen, not to allow Museveni to sow seeds of mistrust amongst us. Because that's what he wants to do. That is what he did to DP, that's what he did to FDC, and that's what he wants to do to us. We must be very, very careful. At the same time, friends, and quote me carefully, at the same time, we must look out for any sellouts because they are among us. I repeat, we must look out for any sellouts because they are what? They are among us. The question is, how do we deal with suspicions? Because there could be suspicions that we could treat as facts. There's a suspicion on one hand and there's evidence on the other. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, I think it is important to remind fellow Ugandans that Museveni is just using the courts of law as tools of oppression. I mean, if somebody has committed a crime, why don't the courts work? Why does that criminal, that criminal, why do they have to negotiate with Museveni to get their freedom? What is the purpose of the courts and the judges? I was also actually, <laughs> I was listening to the so-called Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs, Nobat Mao. He was saying he was working behind the scenes. On whose request? Now, if he was working behind the scenes, negotiating for the release of people charged with capital offenses, what kind of corruption is that? Oh. Mao calls himself a lawyer, but he's not even ashamed to say that this is no longer about the law, it's about politics. He's not ashamed to show the world that this is not prosecution anymore, it is persecution. That is no but Mao for you, Museveni's minister for justice, I mean injustice and constitutional affairs. I will also say this. We know that some of our leaders have even publicly asked us to negotiate our freedom. Some of renowned elders and leaders from our party have asked us to negotiate our fundamental rights and we shall answer them publicly in capital letters that we do not and will never negotiate our rights because we are not slaves and we have committed no crime. We cannot stop them from expressing their views and opinions, but we disagree with those views and opinions. Therefore, tell them when they speak, they are not speaking for us. They are not representing us but themselves and their stomachs. Unfortunately, we have not yet been able to speak to Honorable Sejirinya and Honorable Sewanyana, so we cannot speak for them right now. But I will say this on behalf of People Power and the National Unity Platform. That the position we were holding when they were taken to prison is the same position that we hold and it is the same position that we shall hold forever. It is not a crime to oppose Museveni. It is not a crime at all to oppose Museveni. It is my hope and prayer that these two honorable members will still stand for the same position when they get chance to speak to the nation. Finally, I will once again remind you, friends, that the current behavior of this regime is not a sign of strength. It's a sign of folly. But neither is our behavior. Our behavior in the past few days was certainly not a sign of strength. No. Bickering and infighting is not a sign of strength. It's a sign of weakness. But standing firm and speaking out 
with concrete evidence is a sign of strength. We must not be scattered. I want to assure you, ladies and gentlemen, that Museven is weak and falling. But dictators, Azima. dictators, even if they look like they are on the verge of falling, if you don't do what you must do, they can last for a whole year and another and another and another, just like Mugabe. I am confident that Museven is falling. But I want to encourage us, ladies and gentlemen, to prepare ourselves to be the leaders that the people want us to be. We are not as scattered, we are not as divided as we are projected. But again, we are not as united as we must be. So for any box that needs ticking, let us tick it. For any work that we must do, let us do it, ladies and gentlemen. The past days I've been traveling. I was in Masindi. I was in uh, Serere. I was in uh, Iganga. I was in where else? I was in Hoima and Mubende. And I'll tell you that in a robot of style, I'll be reaching in every corner of this country. But I call upon you to also be the Chagulanyi in your area. Do what you want me to do. Don't do what you wouldn't want me to do. I thank you for listening to me. Katika ambio gerene